जय हिंद एवरी वन माई सेल प्रदीप कुमार त्रिपाठी असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन आई टी डिपार्टमेंट टूडे वी हैव डिस्कस अबाउट द लेक्चर सीरी फाइव इन डी बी एम एस दैट इज टारगेट ऑर एंटर द ऑडियंस ऑफ थर्ड ईयर आई टी स्टूडेंट एंड सी एस स्टूडेंट सो इन द लास्ट लेक्चर वी हैव डिस्कस अबाउट द ट्रांजेक्शन ना लेट्स कंटिन्यू आवर नेक्स्ट लेक्चर लेक्चर फिफ्थ वी कैन कवर इन दिस लेक्चर सीरिजबिलिटी रिकवरेबिलिटी and the isolation and the how the implementation of transaction in dvms in sql and how to achieve searchability how to detect the searchability that we are topic that we have covered in this particular series of lecture series now what is the <coughs> searchability in the searchability how to maintain the serial order of the transaction how to achieve the transaction serial order suppose uh, the basic assumption is each transaction preserve database consistency that means serial execution of a set of transaction that preserves the database consistency in the schedule what do you in the schedule schedule is the basically uh, more than one transaction that run at a time this is called schedule in the schedule is a serial we can say the a serial schedule if it is equivalent to a serial schedule then it is called the schedule is serializable and serializability we can conclude the in the terms of two one is conflict serializability another is view serializability in the conflict serializability we can, uh, can uh, we can calculate the conflict of the operation as we know about the in the transaction there are two type of operations that is uh, read operation and write operation and we can calculate the conflict of operations in particular transaction suppose we have an instruction of ii and ij that is this much and the transaction ti and tj respectively conflict if and only if there exists some item data item q access both iii and ij and the at least one of these instructions have wrote the q what do you mean by these particular these are the four condition where we can arise in the particular transaction and in the first condition here we can see a read item q and read item q in the particular instruction of ii and instruction of ij so we can say about ii and ij they are not conflicting each other because they are the only the read read operation in the read read operation we can see the data value we can not update the data value that's why ii ij that does not conflict each other in the second part we can say about that a uh, read item q and write item q they are conflicting because one of the operation is write operation if the particular instruction read we have a one write operation then conflict may occur in these three conditions one of the operation is write operation so in these in these three condition we can get the conflict operations it may be it may not it depends upon the operation of that particular instruction <clears throat> so these are the four instruction conflicting instructions that we have arise in particular transaction so how we calculate the conflict serializability and what is the conflict serializability how we can attain and how we can achieve and how we can detect that particular conflict serializability in the conflict serializability if a schedule s can transform into a schedule of s dash by the series of swapping non conflicting operation this this is the key part of this particular definition and a uh, a schedule s we can convert s dash both schedules are conflict equivalent if and only if there is a series of swap operation we can convert the schedule layers into the s dash 
here we give the example of this particular conflict serizability suppose we have a transaction of t1 and the transaction of t2 and there are the operations in read a and write a what is a read a read a that means read the data item a in transaction 1 and after the transaction 1 we can read the operation and after read the operation we can write that particular item in a after that we can go to the read operation a and write operation a and here is the data item read b write b read b and write b so these are the not serial uh, schedule because some of the instruction has been executed in T1 and after that jump into the T2, after that jump into the T1, after that jump into the T2. So these are not called serial schedule. And we can make a serial schedule because the complex serializability. Uh, if we can get the serial schedule, then the possibility of conflict is negligible. So we can swap the operations of non-conflicting because these are the operations that are non-conflicting. We can swap in the transaction particular because we can shift this particular operation into the T1 part and this operation is shift into the T2 part. And after the swapping on non-conflicting, we can get the schedule like this. Schedule is converting into the serial. So, schedule 3 is conflict serizable schedule. Here we can take the next example of a schedule that is not conflict serizable because there is a read queue and write queue and write queue. Here are the data item queue that can be updated by the T3 and that can be updated by the T4. So, one data item can be updated by the two two transactions that is not possible in the same time because we have read that particular item and update that particular item in T4. After that, we can write another transaction by T3 that is not possible in particular serial schedule. So, this particular schedule is called not conflict serial schedule. Right. After that, conflict serizability, we can get the view serizability. In the view serizability, there are the some conditions that we met. All three conditions we can say about the trans, uh, schedules are the view equivalent schedules. What are the condition? That the first condition is if in a schedule S transaction T i read the initial item data q then the s dash also transaction t i must read the initial data item q here we can uh, give the example of that particular first condition suppose we have a schedule s and we have a schedule s dash in schedule s we have the transaction of t1 in the s dash we have the transaction of t1 if t1 read the data item q in s in the initial stage then the has does also read the data item q in initial stage this is called first condition in the second condition if in the schedule s transaction t i execute the read operation q and that value was produced by the t j then schedule s does also ti must read the value of q that was produced by the right item q in transaction tj that means we have the same type of operation that performed in the s and s dash in the third condition if any that perform the final right q operation in s dash then must be perform final light operation in S dash. In all three conditions, says that in the S and S dash, both schedules are behaved like same. If any transaction in S can read the data value, then S dash also had that particular transaction can read the data item. In the second condition, 
if any data item read by the transaction and used by the another transaction in S, then S dash also same apply in that particular condition. In third condition, if any transaction can write the data item Q, then that particular data transaction can also write in S dash. So, if all three conditions are met in a series, then it is called view equivalent theory. As we see, view equivalence is basically purely depends upon read and write, write read and write operation. How we how we can get the view serizable schedule? If schedule S is a view schedule, if it is view equivalent to a serial schedule. In every conflict serizable schedule is also view serizable schedule. That means if conflict equivalent schedule is equivalent to the view serizable schedule, but view serizable schedule is not conflict equivalent schedule in every case. It may be, it may not be, but not conflict in some. In that particular example, T27, T28, and T29, these are the examples of that particular view serizable schedule. And uh, we can find out the serial schedule equivalent and every view serial schedule that is not conflicting has a blind rights. This is called view serialability. In the other notations, we can say about the, the T1 and T5. We can the read operation and write operation and we can determine the such equivalence requires analysis of the operation other than the read and write operations. We can find out the uh, these operations of conflict or view serizability. For the purpose of the testing of the serizability test, we can draw the precedence graph of that particular transaction and we can calculate easily the, that is a conflict serizable or not. We can draw the arc from transaction T i to T j if the transaction, if the two transactions conflict and T i access the data item on the conflict across earlier. Suppose we have the example of this T1 and T2, we can draw the arc from T1 to T2 and T2 to T1. If we got the cycle in that particular graph, then how to decide the conflict serizability? In a schedule, a schedule is conflict serizable if and only if its precedence graph is acyclic. Acyclic means that cycle cannot mate. If cycle cannot mate in that particular precedence graph that we can draw between the transactions, then it is called conflict serizable. If the cycle is found, then it is not conflict serizable. In this particular example, we can say this is not conflict serizable because cycle is maintained. In that particular graph, we cannot make the cycle because we can start from here and goes from here and this is no. Uh, TM does not go to the TJ. That means cycle breaks. If the cycle breaks, then this particular graph is conflict serizable. In the cycle detection algorithm exists, which takes the order n square time, then the where n is the number of vertices in the graph, and the for the better result, we can take the n plus e, where e is the number of edges. So we can easily detect the cycle detection algorithm also. If the precedence graph is a cyclic, then the serial order can be obtained by the topological sorting. If we have a no cycle in that particular precedence graph, so we can easily make the topological sorting for maintaining the order of a graph. Test for the view serizability. This is for the conflict serizability and this is for the view serizability. The precedence graph test for the conflict serizability cannot be used to detect directly to test the view serizability. Extension to test the view serizability had the cost exponential in the size of precedence graph. 
that means the problem of checking if the schedule is view eligible fall in the np complete problem that means we cannot calculate easily to find out the view eligible schedule we can easily calculate the conflict eligible schedule because we have a precedence graph and we can easily calculate the cycle if the cycle can maintain then we can say the not conflict eligible schedule but in the view eligibility we cannot easily calculate if it is a problem of and the complete problem so we cannot decide easily view eligible schedule every conflict eligible schedule is view eligible schedule but every view eligible schedule is not conflict eligible schedule and we have also some concept of recoverable schedule cascadeless schedule and cascadeless schedule and cascading rollback solves what is recoverable schedule if the schedule can be recover from the current transactions then it is called recoverable schedule suppose if a transaction tj or reads a data item previously written by the ti then the commit operation of a ti appears before the commit operation of tj these are the example of that particular schedule in the t8 and t9 we have the two operation read and write and the here t9 we have the operation of read and commit so it is recoverable or not because we have the condition for the recoverable schedule if the tj reads the data item that is written by previously another transaction then the commit of the transaction operation appears before the commit operation of tj what do you mean by this particular definition suppose we have a transaction of t1 and t2 and we have a commit operation suppose uh, transaction tj that means t2 read the data item that is written by suppose we have this particular series of transaction then the particular condition says that ti appears before the commit operation of tj suppose we have a commit operation then we have commit operation of t t1 is before the commit operation of t2 if this type of condition is met then it is called recoverable schedule if this type of condition is not met then we can say the not recoverable schedule <coughs> what do you mean by cascading rollback cascading rollback that is a particular one meaning is also clear cascading that means if a single transaction failure occurs in that particular series of a transaction rollbacks then we can say the cascading rollback because failure of one transaction can leads to the failure of another transaction and we can rollback all that particular transactions in a series of a transaction if suppose give an example if t10 fails then t11 and t12 must also be rolled back because t11 and t12 that is the dependent on t10 because the t10 has a read the data item and read the data item b also and that particular data item we can work on in a t11 and t12 so if the power failure or any other reason we can say that if we find the failure of t10 then leads to the failure of t11 and t12 can d2 undergoing a significant amount of work this is called cascading rollback after cascading rollback we can discuss about cascade less schedule what is cascade less schedule in the cascading rollback cannot occur in that particular scenario for the purpose of suppose we have a each pair of transaction ti and tj such that tj read the data item previously written by the ti the commit operation of ti appears before the read operation of tj that is the different condition from the cascading rollback so if the condition is this particular condition can met in that particular schedule then we can say that the this schedule is cascadeless schedule 
in every cascade list schedule is also recoverable if it is desirable to restrict the schedule to those that are cascade list schedule so we can say about that the cascade list schedule when cascade list schedule is occur when the pair of transaction ti and tj such that tj reads the data item that is previously written by the ti and the commit operation of ti appears before the read operation of tj so this is all about the cascading less schedule recoverable schedule and cascading rollback so this is all about the schedules now we can discuss about the concurrency control that is depend on the previously discuss about the serializability and view serializability after the serializability concept we can discuss about the concurrency control because the multiple transaction run at a time and we can also achieve the concurrency in that particular scenario if a database must provide a mechanism that will ensure all the schedules are either conflict either view serializable and are recoverable or preferably cascadeless so we can concurrency we can also maintain the concurrency because multiple transaction run at a time so that is the major issue to conflict is as well so that's why we can need a concurrency control what is concurrency control a policy in which only one transaction can execute at a time that generate the serial schedule but provide a poor degree of concurrency for the purpose of this concurrency control we can use the testing a schedule for the serializability after it has been executed in little too late what is the goal of that concurrency control to develop the concurrency protocol that will ensure the serializability if we can achieve the serializability then we can easily calculate the concurrency we can easily manage the concurrency control because the multiple transactions are running at a time we can maintain the serial order and after the maintaining the serial order we can achieve the concurrency easily so concurrency control mechanism <coughs> must be schedule must be conflict or visualizable either it is recoverable for the sake of data base consistency and preferably cascadeless in the policy in which only one transaction can execute at a time that generates the serial order schedule that will give the poor degree of concurrency because only one transaction can happen at that time so what about other transaction that gives the poor degree of concurrency if the concurrency control extreme that will trade off between the amount of concurrency that allow and the amount of overhead that they incur some scheme that allow only conflict serializable schedule to be generated and while other allow view serializable schedules that or not conflict serializable schedule so this is a concurrency control techniques in the concurrency control protocols also concurrent schedules but ensure the schedules or conflict or view serializable and are recoverable and cascadeless schedules in the concurrency protocols do not examine the precedence graph at it, it is being created instead of a protocol impose a discipline that avoids a non serializable schedule different concurrency control protocols that provides a different trade off between the amount of concurrency that they allow and amount of overhead that they incur the testing for the serializability help us understand why a concurrency control is uh, control protocol is correct so we can easily calculate the test for the serializability and we can easily understand why a concurrency control protocol is correct 
weak level of consistency some the applications are willing to leave a weak level of consistency because allowing the schedules that are not searchable schedule if we can allow that particular schedule that are non serial schedule then it leads to the weak level of consistency for the example if we can read only the transaction that wants to get approximate total balance of the account this particular example give the weak level of consistency because only one transaction can read that particular time in the other example suppose we can calculate the query optimization in the database that is also weak level of consistency so such transactions need not to be searchable with respect to the other transaction so trade off accuracy for the performance are required so level of consistency that will depends upon the database so level of consistency in sql 99 92 if the version we can use the 92 then searchable by default it is searchable repeatable and read only the committed records to be read committed records to be read what do you mean the committed record to be read that is the repeated read and read of the same record must return same value however a transaction may not be serialer it may find some record inserted by a transaction but not find others in the read committed only the committed records can be read successive read of the records may return the different values read uncommitted that means even uncommitted records may be read <clears throat> level of consistency that means a lower degree of consistency useful the gathering a approximate information about the database what do you mean by the warning in that particular level of consistency then that means some databases system do not ensure the searchable schedule by default suppose we have the example of oracle and postgres <coughs> sql prior to the version 9 by default support a level of consistency called snapshot isolation not a part of sql standard in that particular transaction suppose we have used in transaction definition in uh, sql we can <coughs> sql in the sql transaction suppose we get by default implicitly we can use a transaction in sql by the two type of operation one is commit work another is roll back work in the commit work we can commit the current transaction and begin a new one in the roll back we can current transaction to be aborted we can roll back we can restart at that particular transaction in the almost all the databases by default every sql statement has also commit explicitly if it is executed successfully isolation level can be set at a database level isolate isolation level can be also changed to the start of the transaction what is the implementation of the isolation level we can achieve the concurrency by the implementation of the isolation we can use the locking technique time stamp technique these are and multiple version of the each data item these are the technique that we can use in that particular set of database and we can achieve the concurrency control technique in that particular transaction in the locking protocol we have discussed in the next series but we have the brief about, idea about the locking locking in the locking the whole database versus the lock data items locking technique in sql so these are the brief about the isolation label this particular series and we can also discuss these locking and time stamp in next series